In 2011, a sequence of videos was released on YouTube by a guy named Ivan0135, who may have been connected with the KGB because the videos have the KGB logo on them. Now, what they depict is, well, a being a subject with a head that kind of makes you go, hmm, as well as strange body proportions. In other words, the typical gray alien look. So the, the sequence of videos kind of lays out this narrative, right? You've got an alien craft flying. Uh, next, you've got these aliens lying on the ground next to a broken craft. And then you have this alien that is supposedly captured alive. And this is the one that they call Skinny Bob. Now, this sequence of videos apparently happened uh, in the 1940s. And then later on in the sequence of videos, you've got supposedly in the early 1960s, um, a group of three aliens who are working with whoever captured Skinny Bob before um, on a treaty. You know, the funny thing about these types of videos is that if you think back in the past, uh, like the alien autopsy videos and whatnot, they were usually given to some UFO researcher who investigated the videos and any story behind it, and then kind of pushed it out and pushed the story forward, wrote books about it, uh, went on radio, went on ancient aliens or something, and, and got somebody big behind it like David Wilcock or um, Stanton Friedman, something like that. But this one, you know, it's weird. It just shows up on YouTube with nobody pushing it forward. And through the years, it's like it never gained any traction because of that baby. Or, I don't know, to me it just seems like a weird little anomaly around the video. Then the other thing you think of too is that, well, most people seem to argue around the blurry uh, images of aliens and UFOs. And it's almost like if there's a really strong image, everybody will just write it off as being CGI um, because we're so used to thinking in terms of, well, it's got to be blurry if it's real. The video could be anything. It could be um, someone in a costume, a kid in a costume, or a midget in a costume. It could be uh, CGI, total CGI, or, or a mixture of the two. When you have this sort of um, uh, sheen of 1940s, 1960s flashing video with you know dirt and stains on it, it's, it creates a really good layer, a really good mask to hide uh, CGI or uh, people in costumes. So it could be that, or it could truly be something real, something that really happened. So when I do these projects uh, on trying to figure out if something's real or not, what I typically do is, is I task a couple of different angles so that we can, um, you know, in a sense, triangulate it uh, to come to a conclusion or lead us towards a conclusion. And I'll lay out each tasking as we go, but we've got three different angles that we're looking at. Number one, we're looking at the reality of the Skinny Bob story uh, so we can understand if it's a hoax or something real. Real being the narrative that we've been given of the crash, saucer, and captured alien. Number two is that we're going to look at that subject in the video known as Skinny Bob at the moment that it's being videotaped um, so we can understand if it's a person in a suit or something that is fully physical. And number three is we will look at where this subject known as Skinny Bob comes from, where they live. Uh, that could lead us to, you know, like a, a suburban neighborhood um, or it could lead us to somewhere else. Early on in the remote viewing sessions there's um, imagery as well as references to UFO and then it, it, it goes into some references to army uh, as well as something crashing. Then the, the viewers start to describe the subject uh, and a subject just so you know is any type of sentient being. We just call it a subject. It, they, they talk about this subject feeling alone and empty, abandoned and angry, um, and isolated. The subject also feels beaten, defeated, discouraged, and trampled. And it, it's more of the same when this particular viewer does what we call a consciousness map on the subject. And I think ultimately telling is this one statement of everybody left me and why me.
As far as the physical descriptions go, they talk about the subject being bald and thin. Um, one viewer refers to them as a creature. Uh, they also talk about the skin being a yellow-green color, as well as focusing in on the hands, uh, large hands. And this viewer talks about, well, the hands seem like a claw, right? Three fingers and a claw. And then we have this other viewer uh, getting the sensation that this is a, a lizard-type person and they begin to focus on the face and then they give us this. So you've got this image now of um, an almond-shaped eyed being showing up in the sessions. Now, this is where I think the, this data gets really interesting. Um, one particular viewer started to dig pretty deep into this and began to describe this silvery shaped object um, and, and these beings that travel from a space very, very far away. And the viewer draws this picture of, of this rocket ship with these subjects around it. And then they have this, what we call an analytic overlay or a deduction, which is a high level concept um, of the planet of the apes. And this is fascinating because Think of yourself as an advanced race. You perceive yourself as an advanced race. You're able to jump from planet to planet. You, you know of this planet across the galaxy that contains life forms, uh, as well as a lot of um, uh, resources that you could probably take. And there's a small window for you to get there. You go to this planet. Your ship crashes. They capture you. The rest of your comrades die. How are you going to feel? You know, you've got these, you know, human doctors poking you with sticks. Uh, and, and you're going to consider that you're stuck on the planet of the apes. This viewer also goes on to describe that for them to get here, the timing is crucial. They've got a, a small window, a small aperture to go through. And they talk about um, astronomical calculations. Uh -huh. They talk about what they're doing here. They talk about exploration, scavenging, mining, looking around, as well as harvesting. Now I don't exactly know what harvesting means and I'm not going to get hung up on one word that a remote viewer put in a session, but it is kind of curious though when you look at the gray phenomena and, and in a sense uh, a lot of people say that they're harvesting our DNA. So basically what we have here is a subject uh, and a group of subjects that came from far away. It seems to be a small window for them to get through that subject feels that it was left here, uh, left alone in the planet of the apes. And you look at what we don't get. What we don't get is this idea of deception, concoction. We don't get uh, sort of a production. We don't get a um, uh, cameras. We don't get somebody working on a computer, creating something, CGI. What we get is the storyline the narrative and more expanded narrative on what those videos are initially telling us. So it starts to lead me down the path of thinking, well, perhaps this might be true. But we have to come at it from a different angle now to see if we can pull it apart even more. So the next question we're going to look at with remote viewing is the subject, specifically the subject Skinny Bob, uh, in the video. We want to determine if this subject is a real subject or if it is a person in a costume, CGI, puppetry, or anything else. In this set of sessions, the viewers start out pretty much describing a, a general location, a general setting as to where this is occurring. They describe this, this cave-like and tunnel-like feature. Uh, it's, it's sort of an enclosed space in here, yet with high ceilings and a heavily constructed aspect to it, metallic aspect, somewhat like an underground complex. And there are mentions of a male-dominated group mind in relation to this. Um, and one viewer describes the location here as uh, being medical and lab-like. The subject of concern here is, you know, once again, like the last grouping, uh, it's pretty much the same stuff, described as feeling alone, isolated, waiting, and angry. Uh, the physical descriptions follow in line with the last grouping of sessions as well. Uh, Non-human, small, thin, and yellow-green in color.
And this session also goes a little bit deeper outside of the other sessions on what's occurring with the subject in this general time frame that we're viewing it in. The, the viewer has the non-human subject in what's described as a small rubbery pool filled with warm liquid. Which is really curious because I have read stories on, you know, abductees claiming that they've seen greys bobbing in vats of liquid. Take it for what it's worth, I don't know. What's also interesting here is that this viewer is describing this subject as being still and stoic on the outside, yet internally they're going insane and telepathically the viewer is describing them as sending out this pop-like energy, this telepathic pop, uh, in order to gain some type of attention. Um, there's also this language that refers to a hive mind and a collective consciousness. So you have to wonder if this is some type of telepathic relay, some type of uh, signal sent out, so whoever is related to this thing can come and get him. In the last grouping of sessions, if you recall, there was a viewer who did what we call a consciousness map on a subject that this viewer got there. And on this particular session, this viewer does another consciousness map on uh, the subject. Now, keep in mind that the remote viewers are blind, right? They don't know what they're remote viewing beforehand. And these groupings of sessions that we're doing here are spread out with others in between them. So there's no way for them to know uh, what they're viewing. So this viewer does another consciousness map, and you know, more or less the same mind state, isolated, angry, alone, but now the subject that they're doing the consciousness map on, since it was the same as before, is complaining that they're being bothered by the remote viewer. When they go into uh, a subconscious thoughts from the subject, the subject is saying, you again? Can't you leave me alone? I don't want anything from you. I, that's a fascinating piece of data because um, what we find when we remote view beings, aliens that have more of a holistic mind, the human mind is somewhat fractured and we find it difficult to access these deeper parts of our mind. It takes a lot of work for us. But when you remote view some of these with a more holistic mind, you find that they're aware. They are completely aware of you remote viewing them and they will react to you. So that's exactly what's happening here. And I think it was quite a surprise to the remote viewers. Why, why is this happening? Why is this subject reacting against me? And that's always a, a strong sign that what you're dealing with is a non-human. So far, you know, all the data is really compelling. It, it seems to line up with this narrative, with the claim that's been given through the videos. Uh, but we also want to task one more thing on this. We want to task on where Skinny Bob comes from. We want to understand uh, if, he, if he lives in the log cabin somewhere on Earth, you know, what his home is. Or he comes from the stars, from another planet somewhere, or maybe perhaps even a different dimension. So the viewers talk about these crystalline type structures that are on this large, large expanse. This location is described as being very white. There's a burst of light in the atmosphere coming from these crystalline type structures. And we, we get this clear indication, you know, the viewers are basically saying this is not Earth. This is another planet that's very far away. So we have this, this planetary surface with the crystalline type structures, but what we really get in relation to that is this, this mind, this sort of all-pervasive intelligent mind that's moving and spreading out. And this mind uh, that, that Skinny Bob defines also as home seems to be part of the crystalline structures as the remote viewing data is suggesting. It's got this uh, connection or perhaps this mind, the core of the mind exists within these crystalline structures far, far away and it being very telepathic and intelligent. They're perceiving this mind has an awareness of them remote viewing it. 
Now another viewer goes into this uh, consciousness map on the blob, on this mind. And, and what it's doing is that it's exploring and learning, um, it's feeding, it's surviving, it's exploiting men and frontiers. It's looking for places to live, most likely. And Skinny Bob and these other greys, uh, if that's what they are, when they come here, they are probably that, that, that forward front of this group mind. But truly, that mind is their home. And I find it really interesting, this correlation of mind and crystalline structures, uh, because you know, we're just only beginning to very slightly scratch the surface of quantum computing. In quantum computing, unlike now, what we use is this uh, binary digital system. Quantum computing uses crystalline structures in order to move photons and atoms through them, uh, which can process information light years ahead of how we can now process information. So it makes you wonder if this is well, some type of biological AI intelligence. Okay, so let's synopsize the data. Um, the first tasking on uh, the reality of the Skinny Bob story, we don't get a concoction. We get a subject who is very unhappy. Um, we do get the alien face. We do get an alien. Uh, we get references to this subject being non-human. We get a description of their body with the long fingers with uh, the yellow-green skin. And we also get an expansion on that where we get uh, these beings traveling and exploring, looking to harvest, looking to survive. On the second grouping of sessions, on the subject known as Skinny Bob in that video, we have the viewers again describing the same thing that showed up in the first grouping of sessions, basically uh, something that looks like a gray alien. Uh, we've got this subject again very unhappy. We've got it, it sending out this telepathic signal to uh, in a sense be rescued quite possibly and it really begins to look like there's something here. Now on the third one I think it pretty much seals it for me. The third tasking on where Skinny Bob comes from, well obviously it's not Earth, right? And people talk about the gray alien and those like the gray alien as having this hive mind mentality. And we're getting exactly that. We're getting this crystalline structure uh, on a planet far, far away that this, well, the, the, the core or basis of this mind exists. So my estimation, you know, based on all the data that we have, from a remote viewing perspective, I would say the Skinny Bob story is true.